Okay, so this video is a video to explain about terminal velocity. So first of all, in order to understand uh, terminal velocity, there are certain concepts that we need to be very careful and aware about. The first concept that you need to know is that objects that undergo free fall, that means that there is actually no air resistance whatsoever, will not reach terminal velocity. So this kind of uh, situation will not have terminal velocity, all right? And it travels at a constant acceleration forever, okay? So uh, this will be something that you do not consider terminal velocity. Now, in the second case is the case where there will be terminal velocity, and that is when an object travels with uh, in a situation where there is air resistance, all right? That means it travels in air and it will definitely experience terminal velocity so two things you need to take note about this case is that if there is no speed all right that means the object is at rest okay there will be no air resistance because if you are not running into the air the air cannot uh, oppose your motion so that's why there's no air resistance however if your speed increases the air resistance will increase correspondingly that means that if you are running at a higher speed the air resistance will also increase uh, more as your speed increase so let's examine this um, terminal velocity using a parachutist uh, sorry of skydiver all right so imagine that a skydiver just dive out of uh, an airplane we can assume that uh, it is at that moment it doesn't has have any velocity so you can say that the skydiver's velocity is zero so if the skydiver velocity is zero there will be no air resistance all right so if there is no air resistance what we can say is that the skydiver has no uh, as only one force acting on her in this case, the force is her weight, which is 600 Newton, given that her mass is 60 kg. So the resultant force will be only the uh, force due to the weight, which is 600 Newton. So from here, we can calculate that the acceleration is 10 meter per second squared. So uh, we can plot the first point, which indicates the velocity is zero when the time is zero. All right. So let's say that after a while it travels uh, a little bit uh, further down and its velocity increases to 30 meter per second. Now at this velocity, the air resistance hypothetically is 200 Newton. So what happens is that uh, if you take the resultant force, it now is lower. It will be 600 minus 200, which gives you 400. So at this situation, if you find the acceleration, you realize that the acceleration has actually dropped to 6.67 because it's now 400 divided by 60, which gives you 6.67. So if you also plot the point, you will realize that at uh, this time of 3 seconds, the velocity has increased to 30 meter per second. So if we move further down, let's say 8 seconds later, all right, let's say the velocity has reached 50 meter per second, the air resistance will have increased to around 500 newton so in this case the resultant force will be 600 minus 500 which gives you 100 newton and from here we can calculate that the acceleration is 1.67 so if we plot the graph again at 8 seconds the velocity is now at 50 you realize that the increase in the velocity is lower than the initial increase why is it so do take note that the initial increase has a greater acceleration while the second increase has a much lower acceleration. That's why this increase is much lower than the initial increase. So let's carry on. As it uh, goes further, let's say to 15 seconds, uh, the velocity might have reached 60 meters per second. And from there, uh, the air resistance might have increased to 600 newton causing it to be equal to the weight now at this point the resultant force will be zero and then the acceleration obviously will be zero 
So if we plot the point, this 15 seconds will represent the point where it enters terminal velocity. So from this region onwards, all right, we can say that the object has already reached terminal velocity. Okay. So this region is a region of terminal velocity. Okay. So, uh, so something you need to know is that initially the speed increases a lot, then after that it increases lesser and then lesser and then finally it doesn't increase anymore. It reaches a constant velocity and or terminal velocity. Okay. So if you want to explain in words how uh, to put put what is being described in words, you can say that uh, something along this line. As the object falls through the air, its speed increases. All right. So the key is keyword is that the speed increases, causing the air resistance, all right, against its motion to increase as well. So as the speed increases more, the air resistance also increases, causing the resultant force. All right, which also causes the acceleration to decrease. So eventually, the air resistance will equal the object's weight and the object will reach terminal velocity. Okay, where the acceleration is zero. So this will, will be how you can simply explain how uh, what is terminal velocity. So next, uh, some very important characteristic to take note for this terminal velocity graph is that number one, uh, as the object enters terminal velocity, the acceleration decreases from 10 to 0 meter per second square. So initially, the acceleration will be the gradient here. Here will be 10. All right. But as it, as it travels all right, further down, you realize that this tangent gets gentler and gentler and eventually it becomes horizontal. So here becomes zero. So that's why the acceleration decreases. For velocity, the velocity it does not decrease, but actually the velocity increase. Uh, a lot of students at this point usually misunderstood that the velocity decreases, because they thought if acceleration decrease, why velocity will increase? It's a very confusing concept. So I'm going to explain now. The velocity will always increase. It will not decrease even though the acceleration decreases. Why? Because when the acceleration decreases, it only means that the uh, you need to know the you need to understand the word acceleration. Acceleration is the increase in velocity. So if I rephrase it, it means the increase in velocity decreases. Understand? So that means that the initially the increase in velocity is 30. Then after that the increase in velocity from 3 to 8 is only 20. Then after that, the increase in velocity from 8 to 15 is only 10. So what is happening is that when the increase in velocity decreases, then actually it meant acceleration decreases. So acceleration decrease does not mean velocity decrease, but it only meant the increase of velocity decreases. All right. So remember that, uh, it only means the increase in velocity decreases. Okay. So maybe I write it down somewhere. Alright. So acceleration decreases meant that the increase in velocity decreases. So that's why the although it is uh increasing but it will increase at a decreasing rate until it reaches terminal velocity where it will reach a constant velocity. All right. So the last one is air resistance. Air resistance increases till maximum at terminal velocity. In fact, this maximum is actually equal to the weight of the object. All right. So that's all for the topic on terminal velocity. I hope this will help you to understand this topic better. Thank you. Have a nice day.